Hello everyone, my name is Aditya Trivedi. I am a cloud engineer with Oracle. Today we'll be looking at using OAuth to invoke Fusion apps endpoints from Oracle Integration Cloud. So within Oracle Integration Cloud, we have the um, Fusion apps adapters. Um, today specifically, we'll be looking at the Oracle ERP uh, adapter and um, the security policy. In the recent updates of Oracle Integration Cloud, they added um, a OAuth authorization code credentials uh, security option. And uh, so a part of this video, we will be looking at how to configure this. Okay, so for Oracle Integration Cloud, to invoke the Oracle ERP Cloud APIs using the token, there are certain things that need to be set up. Number one is the trust between Oracle ERP Cloud and the Identity Cloud. Uh, number two would be to create a client application specific to this Oracle Integration Cloud so that we can generate the client ID, secret, scopes, and everything, and then pass that along to the Integration Cloud. Uh, so the adapter, once configured, uh, it would use the client ID secret and against those URLs to obtain the token uh, once the token is obtained, the yeah, Integration Cloud can then yeah, invoke Oracle ERP APIs and uh, ERP in turn would take the token and validate that against uh, you know, the, the Identity Cloud service. So this video is divided into two main portions, two main setups. Uh, number one being the trust between ERP and Identity Cloud. And the second would be uh, the actual setup for Integration Cloud. So what needs to be set up in Identity Cloud? What are the details that need to be given to an Integration Cloud developer? Um, and how you would go through uh, you know, setting up the adapter in OIC. OK, so let's look at part one, uh, which is setting up the trust between your Fusion app and IDCS. So the steps involved for part one include, number one, uh, getting the JWK signing certs from IDCS. You have to format the certs uh, in a certain way so then it can be uploaded into um, FA. The second step would be once you get the certs, you know, uh, format them, upload them to the Fusion apps. Uh, now. To do this, you would have to log in to Fusion App uh, to ERP HCM using the IT Security Manager role, um, and then you would see the Security Console. Then the uh, IDCS administrator would then have to create a resource app to represent the FA resource, and in this case, we would need to create an IDCS local user, uh, you know, non-federated local user, meaning has a local password um, account that matches with the FA user. Uh, you only do this when your FA is not already federated with IDCS or you know Okta or, or whatever uh, identity provider um, that you currently have. Okay, so in my case, I am using IDCS. So I searched for the IDCS REST APIs and I found the endpoint that gives me the signing certs. Now to invoke this, I will copy this and I'm using Postman to invoke the REST APIs. Um, now in front of this URL, we need the IDCS URL, till.com. It's a simple get call and no authorization is required. Now once you get the certificates, you see in the payload there are two chunks of certificates. The first one is the IDCS certificate and the second one is the certificate authority certificate. So what you need to do is copy each one into separate files. And each certificate needs to be in a specific format before it can be uploaded to the Fusion app. And this format includes you know, having this begin certificate on the top, the end certificate at the bottom. Uh, there are five dashes with no extra spaces uh, except for the one between the words. The whole uh, certificate that you paste needs to be divided into 64 
character chunks. And the same goes for uh, the other cert that you copy as well. Once you log in to FA, you can see under Tools, there is an option for Security Console. And in the Security Console, we'll go under API Authentication. And here we will click the Create Oracle API Authentication Provider. You click Edit. And in the Trusted Issuer, you will write HTTPS identity.oraclecloud.com. Select all three. Then the next step is to click on Inbound API Authentication Public Certificates and click on Add New Certificate. And I will name this IDCS Cert. So choose File, and then click Save. And the same way, add the CA Cert as well. And uh, you're basically done. So we've uploaded the IDCS and the CA Cert. The administrator will log in to IDCS, go under Applications, click on Add Application, click on Confidential Application. You can name this uh, the FA Resource. Click on Next. We will not configure the client for this application. We'll click Next. And for resources, we will actually configure the, this application as a resource server now. Uh, leave this as it is. You can definitely change this. Uh, refresh token needs to be allowed. And here we will add the application FA application URL uh, with the port. And under scopes, we will add all and select this and click add and click on next and skip the web tier policy skip this and click on finish we can go ahead and activate this app so it's successfully activated so the resource server representing the resource is now active now as a part of the last step what we have to do is the IDCS administrator will have to create a user uh, that corresponds to the user within FA. If you've been using and invoking FA REST endpoints, you must have created a user um, that has the necessary roles and accesses so that that user can invoke the REST endpoints um, of FA. The administrator has to create a user in such a way that the usernames match. Uh, and this user has to be created within IDCS uh, and must have a local user password. And this will make more sense when we get to the point um, where we have to configure the OIC adapter. Part two of the video that is uh, configuring Oracle Integration Cloud's FA adapter. Now, the steps involved for this part two include um, the IDCS administrator has to create a confidential client app this time in IDCS uh, for OIC. Um, so when this administrator creates this app, he will add the FA resource that we created in part one. Uh, here, the IDCS administrator has to put the correct redirect URL and make sure to select the refresh token. Once that is done, the IDCS administrator will give the client ID secret, the scope, and the token and authorized URLs to the OIC developer. Uh, the developer can then go into the FA adapter and perform the authorization code flow, and then test the adapter and start using it in the integrations. Now there are two cases for FA and OIC's IDCS. So we know that when we create an OIC instance, it comes federated with an IDCS. Now if you follow part one, or if you previously had FA federated by an IDCS, this could be two things, right? It could be a different IDCS for FA and a different IDCS for OIC, or it could be the same IDCS for both of them. 
Now, depending on these scenarios, there is slight change in how the OIC developer would uh, go through configuring the FA adapter. Um, in case of different IDCSs, it is pretty simple. Uh, the OIC developer can log in as himself um, and perform the flow, and there's no need for that local user that we created in part one uh, to have access to OIC. But in case where there is the same IDCS for FA and OIC, uh, the FA local user that we created in IDCS as a part of step one, um, we will have to uh, allow, give that user access to OIC so that he himself can log in to OIC and then perform the steps. Now the first step of part two for OIC is the IDCS administrator will come in, um, come to applications and add a client application. This time you click next. Now this time we will configure the client, the refresh token and authorization code. Now I mentioned that we have to put in a redirect URL. So the way to build this redirect URL is you go and get your integration instances URL till.com. So you come in here, you put the URL and you put the 443 and append this at the back. Now this is where we will search for the FA resource application that we created as a part of step one. So this is it. We go ahead and we select the scope. Uh, this is the URL and the scope that we added in the resource portion of this app. Now we click next. No resource this time. Web tier policy and finish. And now you get the client ID and secret and you should store this so that final step would be to activate the application. Uh, so first let's take a look at the scenario where the two IDCSs are different, um, meaning there's a different IDCS for OIC and different IDCS for FA. So I am logged into my integration cloud environment. Uh, this is the adapter configuration for the Oracle ERP adapter. Um, I entered the ERP cloud host. Uh, I set the security policy to authorization code credentials. I got my client ID and secret from the IDCS administrator. For the authorization code and the access token URIs, uh, it's pretty much your IDCS uh, URL. And at the end, in the path, um, for this you can actually search IDCS authorization flow. Uh, and this is where it actually gives you the, the URLs that you can call um, to perform the authorization flow and um, to get the token using the authorization code. Once you've built the authorization code URI and the access token URI, you can fill them in here. Um, and scope will be provided by the IDCS administrator who provides the client ID and secret. Um, and then a single space and then make sure to add this offline underscore access this is required for refresh tokens and uh, the client authentication is optional um, so you don't have to worry about that and I will now click the provide consent to go through the authorization flow um, so now if you look at here, the URL that we see is the integration cloud URL. So we should log in using uh, the user that we have logged in, the OIC developer. Um, and so I will do that. And once I click on that sign in button over on the top there, it will bring me the sign in for the client app. I have to log in using that user that we created the local FA user that we created. Once I sign in, it will ask, you know, to to allow or don't allow. Uh, so this is the client app that we created. 
uh, this is the scope and I will click allow and I get this success message over here so I can close this window now and I can go ahead and click on test and there you go the connection was tested successful so now I can save and start using this in my integrations now let's take a look at the second scenario where OIC's IDCS and the FA IDCS are the same uh, in this case uh, if you remember in part one we created a local IDCS user that corresponded to an FA user uh, that user needs to be given access to OIC um, and the OIC developer has to actually log in using that user um, and that user needs to be given service developer service role within OIC so that the user can configure the ERP adapter and remember this is just a one-time setup so you can give the user access to OIC uh, the developer logs in configures the adapter and then you can revoke the access uh, and I have filled in similarly uh, the client ID secret authorization code access code scope and I will click and go ahead and perform the provide consent so once I do this it uh, brings up the URL the login for OIC this time if you see it doesn't ask me to log in to IDCS because uh, the FA's IDCS is the same as OIC's IDCS so it kind of takes the current user context so if I click on allow and it goes ahead and it says access allowed and I can close this and if I come back here and click on test this should uh, go and invoke the SOA infra URL uh, using the token obtained using these credentials and you see tested successfully once this is done this uh, connection is ready to use in your integration um, and now if you even if you go ahead and revoke the access for that user to this OIC instance this will still uh, work now coming back to our slides um, some observations tips provide consent is a one-time flow uh, the user that we use uh, when we complete the provide uh, consent flow is the users whose username will always go in the token um, so in our case the user was Casey.Brown so even if uh, someone else let's say user A logs in and uses the connection that was configured by Casey.Brown uh, in the token it'll still uh, be Casey.Brown's username uh, on the FA side the FA will check for the username in the token uh, so whenever the IDCS administrator configures that client application or the resource server the scope will always be uh, all uh, just a slash uh, and the limit or any access control limits that you want to put on the user need to be done on the FA side the uh, API authentication uh, that we did in part one uh, is fairly new and sometimes users do run into some issues if you do please raise an SR to set up the trust between IDCS and FA um, and basically that's the part one of this video uh, if you run into some issues just raise an SR and uh, Oracle support will be able to help you complete those steps uh, for you alright thank you for watching this video hope this helped